Hey, what's up guys? I'm down at the shop today. Um, kind of messing with the engine a little bit, still trying to figure out the adapter system. Ran into a lot of issues. Uh, once we got the bell housing, um, had a trans here that we were taking some measurements off of and it's gonna, we gotta change some plans on how we were gonna do it. Um, so I got some things being laser cut and once they get here, we'll be able to figure out a little bit more with it. Um, a lot of other parts on order too. So it's kind of, kind of been slow now. I know a lot of you have wondered in the progress and how we're doing and we haven't done too much. Um, the goal right now is to work on getting the engine on a run stand running before the chassis shows up, which probably realistically won't be till February. So we have some time to play with it right now. Um, but, uh, you know, she's just sitting down here and, you know, we've been, been doing a lot of measuring, um, ordering parts and hoses and gaskets and stuff because we're going to reseal the whole motor um, and go through all that. Uh, made some major changes on what we're going to do to control it from a, a computer standpoint. We thought we were going to go one direction, now we're going another. Um, I guess if there is a good thing about that, it is going to be twin turbo now. Um, because we're gonna lose a little bit of power because we're gonna end up blocking the camshaft so they don't have variable valve timing. And, and to get that back, we'll just put a pair of turbos on it. So uh, it should be pretty exciting regardless. Um, but today what I wanna do is I'm gonna go, kinda go over a little bit of, I guess the process of building a car like this. Um, something we do with customers and you know on the projects that we've done. Um, you know, figuring out a budget um, do our best to stick to it, try to figure out how to make that possible, but at least have somewhat of a timeline, a budget, um, and a, something that's very important. I know a lot of people don't do, you know, a lot of, a lot of bigger shops do, um, is design, um, getting a design from day one figured out. Um, so you know what you're building before you build it, you know, at least have an idea. So it's not, just making it up as you go. Um, so we'll go over that. I'll kind of show you the process we went through to get to the design. I'll show you the final design renderings. Um, and then we'll dive into sponsorships a little bit too. I know that's kind of a subject we got a lot of questions with on the Mustang. How did we get sponsors? Did we get sponsors? You know, do you get stuff for free? All that kind of stuff. And that's uh, all of it's a slippery slope and figuring out how to do it, the best way to do it, and how how to get sponsors if it's possible so that's what we'll talk about today um so i'll go over all that in a bit all right so first i guess we'll go over some of the design and what what that took um and some of the process we did to get there uh so i'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it uh, but we built a 64 corvette for a customer um debuted it at sema and the odyssey battery booth uh, in 2019 and building this car is really what made me want to build a Corvette as well. Um, this car was just incredible to drive. You know, it had the, it had a wide body kit on it with the ZR1 style fenders. Um, you know, it had, we added a split to it, uh, did all the flush mount glass, lots of carbon. It was just an incredible car to drive, very well balanced. Um, and it made me want one basically. So that was kind of the idea of where this one came from. Um, and then since we were running the Lamborghini V10, uh, the plan was to take a lot of the styling uh, characteristics from the, the Huracan and incorporate it into the Corvette um, somewhat seamlessly, if it, that was possible, was that was the idea. You know, I really liked how the, the back diffuser area on this whole car looked. Um, you know, initially I thought this was the front bumper I would like, and. Um, as you'll see at the end, we went through a bunch of a bunch of design changes to get to the what in theory is the final final design. Um, so initially, I kind of just played around uh, on Photoshop with pictures of the '64 that we built. You know, kind of tried to put a scoop on the side that looked like the Huracan, play with the front bumper, see if it even looked good. Um, and I kind of liked the direction this was going in. Um, you know, we had some other ideas in the rear originally, these, you know, these are Camaro taillights, um, you know, whether we were going to do it black or silver, um, and there was a, a Lamborghini that uh, B is for Build did, and I really liked the wheels on that car, you know, and they play off of the Huracan style, so that was 
that was our thought was to use a wheel like that um, and try to create something so I reached out uh, to a designer that I'd seen on uh, Instagram names uh, Karan and I believe he's from India so it's not right around the corner by any means but I liked a lot of the design stuff he did um, you know he's done some Lamborghini some muscle car stuff a lot of the stuff I liked that he would design you know he did he did this Mustang here uh, that had a Ferrari in the back he actually did one color scheme that was uh, very similar to corrupt um, but overall this was kind of what I felt like was my guy and I think in this process you have to have some sort of connection I guess with the designer you know if he's gonna be making some of the decisions of how your car is gonna look you need to like what he does so you know based on how you pick or choose who you want this is how I would do it um, you know we've used several different designers for other cars that we've been building um, and it's not always the same person from the car or from what the aspect of the car is going to look like it always changes so I sent him all this information of the cars I liked um, you know some of my ideas you know and uh, well this is where we were initially so there's a lot about this I do not like um, which I'm sure a few of you also would understand um, but the, the concept was just getting started you know seeing the wheels on the car figuring out some of the body and the lines and stuff to figure out what direction we would go you know so I didn't like this front bumper at all you know a few other odds and ends were were just not really what I was looking for initially um, you know came up with different ideas in the back for taillights um, you know different different ideas for the rockers you know he figured out the split with the the one piece glass so that was good I wanted these hood vents to be deep um, deeper than factory um, but here they have like a this graded panel like what a 63 would have which is isn't something I wanted um, you know again so you just it's a little bit more of the initial design um, you know exhaust taillights all that stuff um, you know and you did a different iteration with some different style taillights just just some ideas you know to initially start looking at the car um, so I took it and used a app called sketchbook um, they just used it on the iPad and I cut and let me kind of cut cut and move stuff around so some stuff not so good obviously like this obviously does not look good but it it could relay the message you know I, I would I did what I could to try to show them what I was thinking um, you know with the, the side scoop being different the front bumper pulled way back uh, stuff like that um, and then you'll get you'll get ideas from everywhere when you're building a car like this um, and to see it all on paper before you build it I think is the most important so coming home from dinner one day um, this is where we got the idea from the taillights. This Kia kind of passed us, and I was like, those look kind of cool. I think I kind of want those. Um, now, obviously, these taillights won't work on the car. We'll have to build it from scratch. But that was the idea of where the taillight came running for us from a Kia. Um, so here, now we're into um, getting a little further into it. You know, he altered the front bumper a bit. Uh, they're kind of... This was the kind of the start of the back with the tail lights and stuff, and I really liked this. This started really going in the direction that I liked in the back. Um, so at least we were on the right track there. You know, it smoothed out the hood inserts. Um, again, this is just different different ways he rendered um, rendered the car. This was all new to me too. I've done a lot of renderings, but a lot of them were sketches. You know, not quite this 3D modeled version so this was this was a new experience for me uh, just learning how this all works where you could get all these different angles and really see it um, so here now we've got the rocker and you know as we kind of discussed with him this is just this would be a lot of work trying to, to reshape the door and they didn't really care for this shape of the scoop anyways um, but we just didn't want to get into that so some of this again was just ideas going back and forth emailing back and forth um, you know different exhaust placements stuff like that um, you know, again that this is with 
um, different headlights. Uh, so you know, this is this is my terrible Photoshop skills, just in a cheap paint program. But this is what I was thinking. I didn't really like the exhaust here. Kind of wanted it to go through a diffuser, kind of like way back at the beginning. This, like, I liked this look, you know. And I think that's kind of what we ended up with in the end. Um, let me get back to that real quick. Um, so that's what I was thinking. Put the license plate there. You know, extend the tail light across. Let's make it connect. Um, we'll just put some sort of mesh for venting and uh, stuff down there. Um, you know, and then same in the front. I, you know, smoothed out this transition that was here. Pulled the bumper back a little bit more. Um, we just kind of played with what he sent us. So here's, I kind of tried to make a rocker. Um, that was a little less noticeable or less aggressive, I guess, if you will. Um, and that's kind of, kind of more or less what it ended up looking like in the end. Um, you know, again, just playing with the things, and then you know, going through the internet all the time, looking at stuff, you see all sorts of weird things. So, this was somebody's idea of what a modern '67 Corvette could look like, and like it or not, it it had some neat designs, but I really liked the headlight shape. Um, so I'd sent that to him saying, I like that. Let's incorporate that. It kind of flowed with our taillight design. Um, so we kind of semi stole this idea, um, from the guy that did the rendering on this. Um, and then the mirrors, I didn't really like, you know, these factory style little mirrors. So we're going to end up probably using the, the newer Mustang mirrors and we'll run the carbon caps. Um, we'll probably have to make our own stand, but that's all, that's all pretty easy stuff. Um, so now we're starting to get a little bit more into the cars taking shape. You know, this is a huge difference from where we started, I feel like. Um, still needed some adjustments and stuff, but I think he, at this point, he nailed the back. Like, it just, to me, this looks so cool. Like, it's a great blend of Lamborghini and Corvette at the same time. I feel like it just really works really well together. Um, you know, big meaty tire because we'll be mini tubbing it with the Roadster Shop chassis and all of that. So this to me is starting to flow really nice the way this rocker bulges out. Um, you know, again, these are just, this is in his 3D model program. So none of this was the final rendering or colors. It was just to see the lines and start figuring stuff out. Um, still, I didn't care for the front end. It's like kind of big and open looking. I don't know, it just, it didn't, it just didn't say that's it yet, so um, we kept working on that um, through a couple other designs, um, so here's, I kind of played with this a little bit, this shape here, like this was really swoopy, kind of like the Lamborghini is, but the Corvette's really sharp up here, so we kind of tried to say, well, maybe if we move that around, um, and then I kind of wanted to try to do a little something different with the vents to make them match the hood as well as I've, this body line right here really won't exist when it's done since this is all going to be one piece it might as well just flow all together um, so again kind of sent those changes uh, to him and he made those adjustments so now we have these deeper vents that kind of mimic the hood you know no body line there um, he made the adjustment in the front end and that's the hard part with and that's the honestly the whole reason we're doing this I think this got worse and just it didn't go in the direction I'd hoped it would um, and that's that's why this is so important because if you just went into this blind you know and we're gonna be cutting this whole front end off and building all of this out of um, you know probably multiple kinds of material wood uh, foam, all that to build a structure to pull a mold off of and then to build the actual part we would just be blind going into that none of that would be it wouldn't be any fun if we didn't have an idea of what it was going to look like or we would basically be repeatedly making all this where doing it digitally saved so much time and effort in the end um, of what we were going to build so um, this was kind of more or less towards the end um, and then one last major change we had was this side vent. Um, I kind of played with that a little bit and I wanted it to be a lot bigger and a lot more aggressive. So, you know, from door to body line, this big open scoop that I feel is a little more on the lines of the, the way Lamborghini would have done it. Um, so then uh, we basically 
said, yeah, that's it. So it got to the point where he did um, started doing the actual renderings where the car was in color. You know, here now you can see the big scoop and, you know, stuff starting to come into shape. Um, it was just... I mean, it was a lot of work for him to obviously get to this point, and this still just wasn't what we were after um, from a front-end standpoint. Um, just, I was hoping when it was in color with all the mesh and the screens and stuff, it would look better. Um, you know, he did a pretty awesome job of putting the engine in there. I, I have no idea how it's going to fit, obviously, until we get there. I think it's going to be sitting higher. And now, in reality, with twin turbos, there's going to it's going to be a lot busier, but it gets the point across, and that's really all we were after from that standpoint. Um, you know, because this helps give us a vision, and then, like we'll talk about later, this helps with uh, getting a sponsorship um, because you can kind of help relay the message of what the final product will look like. Um, so, we kind of played with some of the other bumper styles that Lamborghini had. So, the newer Evo bumpers had a little more going on, it wasn't such a big empty space like this was. Um, so I was hoping that would help. So that's kind of what this is, is just, you know, again, quick crude drawings to try to relay the message. I sent him over these photos of these cars, you know, saying I liked that a little bit better. You know, I wanted to round this corner a bit more so it wasn't so sharp and, fl and would flow a little bit better. Um, so kind of kind of back to the drawing board, unfortunately, I had to start all over with the front end. Um, you know, and this was, this was again the first iteration and it was, in my opinion, was already drastically better. Um, you know, so we went through, you know, to have the vents in here, um, and stuff like that. So really the only change we made from here was I wanted to connect the top, uh, bars, you know, right here, kind of just rolled off and died off into nothing. Um, so I wanted it to, to do this, basically have this shape here go up, you know, whether, whether we make this whole piece out of carbon, just this lower piece out of carbon, I'm not 100% sure exactly what direction that'll go. Um, or honestly, at the end of the day, it may not even look like this, but this is this is where we ended up, and this is kind of the look that I think we're gonna go with. Um, for the most part, there may be some slight design changes, like I said, but um, that's that was really it there from, from the front with the, gave it a little bit more character. Um, and this is kind of just a quick thing. I put this up just for you to see like where we started and where we ended up is such a huge change and this took a long time. This was probably every bit of a month and a half or two months of back and forth uh, trying to get uh, what we wanted. Um, you know, and then uh, what I think we ended up with was pretty awesome. So I'll uh, let you guys look at some of the renderings and um, you have to let me know what you think. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is sponsorships. I got some notes here. I'll uh, I'll put them down in the, the details down below this video. Um, but basically, trying to get sponsors is it's not it's not a walk in the park. I mean, you see a lot of big cars or big people getting stuff or saying they're sponsored, and that's because uh, a company basically. They, they want something out of it. You know, they just don't have free parts laying around to give you. Um, so it has to be worth it for them to give it to you, you know, or whether you get a discount. You know, sponsorship isn't always free stuff. You know, sometimes you, you know, if you're just a guy in the garage, sometimes you might get like a dealer discount or something or, you know, or cost or, or better than that. Um, you know, it varies. It depends on what they see your worth you know it they don't they don't need to give you stuff basically is what it comes down to um 
so the hardest part I guess out of all of it is is getting getting the first one you know you have no without having a sponsor or you know dealing with it you know the experience of getting one um, and not having a reference to be able to give other sponsors you know somebody looking at somebody that has none is a little scarier looking than somebody that says they're sponsored by you know 10 people and have built multiple cars that all looks a lot better so it's a struggle in the beginning to build a reputation uh, to be able to get a company to put their faith in you to give you a discount or give you something because they want something in return and that's that's what it's all about is you know what are they gonna get from you you know saying you're gonna build a cool car and it's gonna be cutting edge um, you know different than the rest it doesn't mean anything to them you know that's what everybody says you know you have to come to the table with a plan so in the past when when I've, at least when I've done it I typically put together um, a pretty detailed email you know that has a plan for the whole car a timeline um, you know the future for the car um, and kind of go over all that um, so when you do this that's where the renderings become important because to say oh I'm gonna build a Corvette that's gonna be super cool and it's gonna have this crazy engine well they have no idea what I'm talking about but if I could show them those pictures that you just saw that really opens the door to at least their mind seeing it you know they might like it they might hate it you have no idea what they're gonna say but at least it gives the potential of showing that you know and from there um, you know we tell them you know as far as what we're gonna do with the car you know it's not like I I'm not asking for a bunch of stuff so then I can just drive the car around you know and and that's it you know that doesn't benefit them and that's what it's all about so I'm realistically at the end of the day at least in my experience is the sponsorships when while they're awesome to get if you do get them they cost so much more to get a sponsor than what you actually get so I mean like take the Corvette for example you know it would be easy to go to the junkyard buy a you know whatever LS a cheap LS you know and stick it in there and get the car running and driving you know but instead we're trying to step out of the box you know and we bought this Lamborghini engine which was 25 grand you know so that's a huge chunk of change you know and it might help us get you know four five six grand and stuff you know for free or discounted or something like that but it would have been cheaper to go a different route so that, I guess initially that's what you have to decide you know and then at the same time we're promising to all these people um, that we're gonna take the car all over the country and show it so that's I mean that's what we do we do you know high-end national level car shows so the car will go to SEMA it will go on a good guy circuit it'll probably go to Reno it'll go to Monterey um, you know there's gonna be I don't know five ten thousand dollars spent in traveling and hotels and not being at work making money to show off all the stuff we got and show off the car which helps build our business as well um, but that's what's a tricky part about getting a sponsorship especially if you're not a shop um, you know if you if you're just a guy in the garage that's where it gets really hard and it's it's hard to approach a big company if if you're a smaller guy um, you know you have to try to look for maybe a smaller company but at the same time you don't want free parts for free parts like we there's stuff that people would give us that I wouldn't want you know I wouldn't put it on my car I want everything that's going on this car to be something that if if they wouldn't sponsor us or wouldn't give us I'm buying it anyways because I know it's the good stuff you know like a perfect example is um, is Holly you know we're fortunate enough on this project to be working with Holly but at the same time we've spent like 50 or 60 grand with Holly in the past like year and a half 
there's got to be, I don't know, 10 cars, if not more, currently in the shop that have Holly EFI systems on them. It's all we use. It's all we will use because I know it works. So we sell it to every single customer, you know, and they love them. And that's why we sell them because I don't want to be working on some junk EFI system. So if some other, you know, EFI system came to us and said, oh, we'd really like to help you with that. I'd be really leery about it because I know it doesn't work as good as some other systems do. So I guess that's that's the tricky part, you know, as far as that goes. You know, one of the big other things, especially nowadays, is social media. It's it, I know it's a struggle to build a page and get out there, but you have to do that. You know, I mean, we we were really fortunate with the Mustang. It it my, at least I think it did. It blew up on social media you know and we had a lot of help from some big pages that saw its potential too like you know uh classics daily and american muscle hd and you know 1320 like all those guys helped us make us from a social media standpoint who we were you know and getting the following that we have now helps our cause because we can say hey look I have this many followers and we get this much interaction and that's the kind of stuff they want to see so you have to you have to do that you know and that means you know if you're trying to get a sponsorship on a car you need to spend some money and have some high-end photos taken of the car again it's it's gonna cost money to get stuff it's not just gonna be hey send this guy an email and say check out my sweet car give me some free stuff to make it cooler because i go to the local car shows and if people saw it they might buy it you know they don't they don't need that you know they want mass advertisement because they could spend you know a couple thousand dollars and run ads in magazines or or online ads or stuff wherever to sell their product to a much larger audience you know so whatever the part costs there's value to that and that's what they're looking for so when when we're fortunate enough to get sponsored it's it's a big deal you know and even if it's even if it costs us more money to get the part you know we represent that company you know like it's a part we made you know we want it on our car and we're glad to have it and you know we're trying to show why you should buy it and that's what that's basically what they're after so that's basically it. you have to try and put a whole plan together you know you need to have a plan for the car whether it's done or being built you know and again that's the renderings or high quality photos of the existing car you know and what are you going to do with it now are you going to take it to shows is it going to go to SEMA is it going to be featured in a magazine you know stuff like that or that is you know do you have a large following on Instagram Facebook or any of these other sites that are getting popular you know that's that's what they want to see and they want to see you represent their product so you basically have to create what I call an ask and you have to ask for something and tell them in return what you're gonna give them and that's all the stuff we talked about you know what shows you're going to you know what's your social media following references of other sponsors if you're fortunate to have any you know and basically that gives them the idea if it makes sense to give you something or not so that's kind of the gist of it it's a it's a tough tricky thing to do you know I there was a there was a lot of times with the Mustang you know we thought we might you know be fortunate enough to get something and it didn't happen and you know it's like well you know maybe you know maybe the next time you know after we show what we could do it'll be easier and you know that's what we're doing with the Corvette now so you know again the first one's hard you know, if you build a couple cars, you can show what you can do. You're willing to put in all the time and effort with a photo, with the photos, the videos, traveling to shows, you know, 
advertising, basically being a brand ambassador for these companies, you know, and explaining to these people, you know, creating sales. You treat yourself like you're an employee of these companies, basically. So that's that's what they want. And that's the only way this is going to happen. So um, I guess take that for what it is, and um, that's at least my experience, and that's that's what I've seen that it takes uh, to get sponsored. So. Um, that's basically it. Uh, like I said, we're uh, I'm trying to put something together on how we're gonna make the adapter system uh, to put that Tremec behind the the 5.2, and it's been it's just been one headache after another. Every time we think we got it, we have to completely change plans. Um, you know, we we had this grand idea of having a an adapter plate like we did with the with the Ferrari setup where it changed the pattern so it all bolt together and the transmission input shaft isn't long enough now so it won't even reach the pilot bearing so we don't have room to add an adapter plate on top of it so now we're gonna probably have to modify the bell housing we have to get the trans to reach and in the end, it actually might be easier. Um, it seems like every time we turn around um, and we're doing more CAD design and uh, stuff like that, it, it um, you know, we figure out, figuring out a different way to do it, but it's still, it's still hard to do. <laughs> Basically, at the end of the day, I don't want to say this is a walk in the park by any means. This is by far was the hardest thing to do in the Mustang. It's proving to be harder with this setup so um but we'll get there um i'll show you how we did it once we get it done um and then uh we'll start rolling into more stuff you know i don't know if it'll be engine related or body related on the vet you know we're like i've said before we're waiting can't do too much with the car until i get the chassis i don't want to trust the chassis that's under it since it's so rusty it, you know we could we could probably put the wide body kit on it and start making stuff and then we take it off and put it on the roadster shop chassis and find out the stock chassis was all twisted and then we had to cut it apart so i don't want to do anything twice um you know we got plenty of time so that's uh that's it so i'll see you guys next time